It's me, Dada, the monk dude. Today I'm going to talk about the revolution of love and why I became a spiritual activist. Who amongst you, at some point in your lives, was a child? <laughs> you remember what you wanted to be when you grew up? If anybody had told me that I'd grow up and become a monk, I would have thought they'd lost their last marble. <laughs> when I was 10 years old, I wanted to be a wizard. <laughs> I wanted to be wise and strong and kind, like Gandalf. <laughs> so you can imagine my excitement when my older brother Christian revealed to me that he was already a wizard. This seemed like a golden opportunity for my future career, so I applied to be his apprentice. You cannot be a wizard like me, he said, for you are afraid of the dark. And it was true. I was terrified of the dark. He said, if you want to become my disciple, you have to undergo a terrible test. Go into the dark heart of the forest, alone at midnight, and wait there and listen. This seemed impossible. I was afraid to go into that forest in the daylight. And it's not because I was a coward, it's because I was really sure that our garden was infested with tigers. I lived in New Zealand. There are no tigers in New Zealand, but <laughs> <coughs> I was sure there were. But I really wanted to be a wizard. So one windy night, I mustered my courage, and I crept out of our front door and walked down the long, curving path towards the forest, and I could just sense those tigers stalking me licking their lips, ready to pounce if I should falter. Every step was an effort of will. But I fought down my fear and came at last to the heart of the forest where I waited and I listened. And I felt calm despite my fear and strong despite my youth. And a great joy welled up in me, for I was to become a wizard. As the years passed, my interests shifted. I'd been playing the piano since I was four years old, but it wasn't until I saw Led Zeppelin play Stairway to Heaven live for the first time that I knew what I really wanted to be. Now I had a much more realistic ambition. I was going to be a rock star. But then, later when I was 19, I had an extraordinary spiritual experience that changed everything. Imagine all the love in the universe condensed into a single moment, floating before you like the sun, so utterly real that everything else seems like a dream. In that moment, I understood that the purpose of my existence was to become one with the source of infinite love within me. I felt called to walk the spiritual path as a yogi and to master my mind through meditation and to serve as a teacher, if I could, helping people along the, heart, the path to happiness. I finally had a life purpose that actually made sense. So I left my university and I left my rock star fantasy and I left my country and I went to India where I studied spirituality and learned about the ancient intuitional science of Tantra Yoga from a great master. So I had a pretty interesting childhood. I had the tiger issue to deal with, but I had another problem, which was that I thought that the world was going to end. My parents took me on my first anti-nuclear protest march when I was five years old, and I came to believe that human beings would destroy themselves during my own lifetime. You'll be happy to know that I can tell you the news. Human beings did not destroy themselves during my lifetime so far, and in fact, instead they, uh, of, of having a nuclear war, they ended the Cold War, which when you think about it, it's probably a much better idea. And in spite of all the suffering, and exploitation in the world, I always feel that there's cause for hope, and I see reasons for it every day. In 2008, the Ecuadorian government 
passed a policy decision changing their constitution to recognize the rights of ecosystems to live and to thrive. Just a few weeks ago, India officially recognized dolphins as non-human people. You read about that? Dolphins in India now have the right to life and to liberty. Quite literally, dolphinariums are being banned in India. Dolphins are being released. Recently, I met a young lady called Vivian Ha, who started a campaign to end child slavery. In about a year, she raised $900,000 by selling lemonade. Vivian is nine years old. That's Vivian. Isn't she cute? She's a force to be reckoned with. The world is changing. Paul Hawken wrote a book called Blessed Unrest. Who's read it? I hope you all do. It's an incredible book. He describes the more than a million organizations around the world that are dedicated to social justice and environmental sustainability. This is the biggest social movement in the history of the world. It has no name, it has no leader, it has no location, and it's largely ignored by the mass media and politicians. All the people working in these organizations are united by one common thread, a concern for the other, not just for themselves. We are finally evolving beyond the ego from conflict and competition to cooperation, from nationalism to humanism, and beyond humanism to neo-humanism, embracing all life. We're seeing the beginnings of a revolution of love. Now, you might ask, why do I, knowing all this, and knowing there are so many problems in the world and there are so many important things to do, why do I spend so much of my time sitting with my eyes closed, apparently doing nothing? And worse still, teaching and encouraging other people to do the same. Because meditation can make you wise and strong and kind, like Gandalf. Because meditation can make you confident and creative, like a rock star. And because meditation enables us to feel that on a deeper level, we are all connected, like islands under the sea. It's like falling in love with the universe. And anyway, Yoda meditates, and it doesn't get cooler than that. <laughs> the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen, or heard, or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. So said Helen Keller, who could not see or hear, but whose inner vision was 2020. We hold within our hearts the greatest treasure in all the world, the source of all the love we have ever felt and will ever feel. So why don't we feel it all the time? It's so frustrating, it feels like a design defect. It's like we've got this treasure in a chest and the chest is locked. We have a key, but the key is locked inside the chest as well. I have some good news for you. When I was in India, my spiritual master gave me a spare key. And I'm going to share it with you. Wizards use magic words. Yogis use mantras. My magic key is a universal mantra, a phrase in Sanskrit that can open your heart. It's pronounced Baba Nam Kevalam. You want to repeat that after me? Baba Nam Kevalam. Let's do it again. Baba Nam Kevalam. Perfect. So I want you to sit, we're going to do a very short chant and meditation. So I want you to sit straight, just close your eyes, and 
and as I sing, just pick up, pick up the tune and join me, and then I'll guide you through a simple meditation. your eyes closed and let the mantra with the music continue in your mind as though you were hearing it. Let the voice of your memory continue running by itself so you're listening to this voice coming from within your mind and then feel it's coming from a deeper place from your inner self, as though the most beautiful part of you was singing to you. And it's a love song, reminding you that at the center of your being is a place of limitless love. You're touching the consciousness that connects all of us. Just let the mantra and the music continue in your mind and draw you into that place. And we'll just meditate silently like that for a minute. Now just take a deep breath and if you like you can open your eyes. And a revolution wouldn't be much fun without music, so I've written a song for us all called The Revolution of Love. And the animals 
and the trees And all the spirits yearning to be free Let us begin a revolution of love We've never needed it more What a way for a love Imagine if all the world were friends A sudden evolution into a cosmic family Love conquers all in the end In our hearts, we hold the key. I know it's true. Now I see that the lands around us and the seas and the animals and the trees. All are waiting for you and me To begin a revolution of love We've never needed it more What are we waiting for? A love revolution What a fine Imagine if everyone was your friend A sudden evolution into a cosmic family Love conquers all in the end Then all our dreams will come to be For love will always set us